This is our porch. It needs a bench. The idea for this bench came from this bench. This bench came from this piece of wood. This piece of wood came from a dumpster. I don't know where this dumpster came from. So I originally built this bench when I was out for a walk one day and I found a piece of wood in a dumpster. Um, I just kind of wanted to see what I could do with it, so I brought it home and I made this bench. Uh, the bench is kind of flimsy as you can see. It's The wood was probably only about a half of an inch thick, maybe a little bit more than that to start, but by the time I got it all nice and smooth it was pretty thin. I wouldn't recommend sitting on this bench. I brought it to my office and I pretty much just use it to set a couple bags on. Partly because it's convenient and partly because it deters people from sitting on it. I did have one guy sit on it one time. Kind of a bigger guy actually, probably, I don't know, 210 pounds. It didn't break, but there was a lot of creaking going on. So I actually really like the design of this bench. You know, it's very simple, pretty minimal. I really love the look of angled and tapered legs, so I ran with that idea. I went through a couple of design ideas before finally landing on this design. You can see it has all of the exact same pieces that the original bench has, but each piece is just slightly different. I don't know that I normally would have picked cherry to build something outside, but I had some leftover cherry from another build, so I took the path of least resistance. Plus, the bench is going to sit under a porch. It's not really going to be out in the sun or in the rain or anything like that, and the weather here in Southern California is pretty mild, so I'm sure it'll be fine. After I joined and planed all the cherry to the proper thickness, I built the four legs. I can get all four legs from two small chunks of wood by kind of flipping things around and nesting them together. The legs are going to angle in 15 degrees from 90 degrees, so I guess that's 75 degrees from being vertical. I started by making a 15 degree cut from the top and bottom of the piece that the legs would come from. Then I marked out one of the legs carefully and cut it out on the bandsaw. I use this first leg as a template for the rest, using it to mark and cut out the others also at the bandsaw. Once I had all the pieces cut out, I clamped them together with their outside edges flush, and I run their wobbly edge over the joiner again so that they're all perfectly equal. One of the repeating themes that I find with woodworking, and I'll probably say this over and over, accuracy is way less important than repeatability. What I mean is, if something is supposed to be 16 inches, it isn't really that important that it ends up being exactly 16 inches. It could be a 32nd of an inch off either way. And at some level, you can't even really control for that. But what's more important is being consistently short or long by that 32nd of an inch. As long as you repeat the same cut over and over, things are usually going to come out okay. Back to the legs, now that the shape is created, it was time to start cutting in some joinery. I went ahead and cut some dados for all the connector pieces that'll run between the front and back of the legs on either side. We know that the outside edge angles are 15 degrees, so I basically set up the dado blade, spent a bunch of time accurately marking out where all of my cuts needed to be, set my miter gauge at 15 degrees, and started nibbling away. Yeah. 
Cutting the cross connector pieces was the first part of the bench that was a little tricky. The reason for this is because of the taper of the legs. I knew that the outside edge of the cross pieces would be at 15 degrees to match up with the legs, but the inside of the legs are basically just some random unknown angle. I did my best to measure and I came up with 18 degrees. Also, each cross piece is a different width. Basically, they need to get wider as you get closer to the top of the leg, where the leg gets wider. So, again, I marked out everything, set the blade, and cut a 15 degree angle off one side, and an 18 degree angle off the other side. For the bottom cross pieces, I also cut a dado on the top, which will eventually hold a stretcher that will keep the legs from wanting to move away from each other when somebody sits on top of the bench. Now I was ready to glue up the legs and do some sanding. The legs aren't quite complete here because I need to wait till the very end to glue on the top piece after the seat is on, otherwise there'd be no way to get the seat in. With the base mostly finished, I turned my attention to the stretcher, the piece that would run between the two legs. This was the second tricky part of the build. I needed to cut joinery on the ends to mate with the dados I just cut in the cross pieces, but the inside edge needed to match that 18 degree angle. I couldn't use the dado blade here because if you tilt the blade at 18 degrees you're going to end up with it way higher on one side than the other. So instead I made a cut with a regular blade at 18 degrees. Then I turned the piece vertical and cut out the remainder. This left a minimized version of the problem the dado blade would have left. But it was easy to clean up with the chisel. I went ahead and left the piece long on the edges so that I could clean it up to match the outside 15 degree angle after gluing the whole base together. Here I am trimming off those extra pieces. For the top I had to use two boards glued together. It's about 15 inches wide which is almost twice the width of my joiner. When I'm gluing up pieces like this, I like to use a few dominoes to help with alignment. I don't know that they really provide any extra strength, but they make it easier to keep the boards aligned vertically and horizontally. After a little cleanup, I cut the top to the finished length and width. Since the ends were uneven, and the board was too wide to use my miter gauge, I used a track saw to cut it square into the finished length. I wanted to put a really long bevel on the underside of the ends, but a blade on a table saw only tilts to 45 degrees, well at least on my table saw. So instead of having that be my limit, I set the blade at 15 degrees and cut the piece vertically. So that would be the equivalent of being able to tilt your blade to 75 degrees. To attach the top to the base I use these figure 8 clips. I don't know if that's their technical name. They're pretty easy to install and they allow for wood movement so I really like them. I probably should have done this before I had assembled the legs, but it came out fine. Plus, placement isn't really that important since they're going to be hidden on the underside.
I'm pretty happy with the way the bench came out. It's definitely different and modern looking, but I think it also has a sort of Japanese-ish quality to it. I don't really know what Japanese-ish means, but I don't know. That's just the way it comes off to me. If I were to build it again, I think I'd do a couple of things differently. I'd probably make the taper a little more exaggerated, keep it the same at the bottom but maybe make it a little wider at the top. I'd also play with the idea of having two cross stretchers, one in the front and one in the back, instead of just having one in the middle like it is now. That'd probably also help with the stability a little bit. It's fine, but can never be too sturdy, I guess. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, good news, I'm gonna be making more. What I would ask of you is please, please, please subscribe. Seriously, it would mean the world to me. Also, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, wherever you call home. And finally, this is the most important thing. If you think you know somebody who would like this, tell them. A friend, your mom, your dad, an enemy, your cat, whatever. Just tell them. Any questions, you know where to find me. Feel free to ask, and see you next time.